It is Friday, and you are tuned to May the Best Brand Win on Intertalk Media, the undisputed leader in music biz talk. And I am Scott, your host, and a man who thinks that Girl Scout cookies are a legitimate form of addiction and should be treated. Discuss. You can discuss privately, publicly, whatever you want. And with me on the air is a man who's fresh from the halls of the NAM show, Paul B. Paul B., how's it going, my man? I wouldn't call what I am fresh by any stretch of imagination. That show can leave a, it leaves a, it leaves a mark for a few weeks, doesn't it? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm pretty fried. But you didn't get the Namthrax, right? You're, you're still I up came running. in there with Namthrax, not not horrible, but I, I came in there with a with a cold. Actually, we met with one of the exhibitors a few a few days before that to shoot a video, and they were kind of sick, and I think they gave me their cold. So I was kind of fighting oh. the, the, the whole thing. I think I was the uh, the Namthrax vector. In fact, I may have uh, I, I may have infected nice. some notable, very notable players. <laughs> good call. Good call. Good. Yeah, it's nice. You know, I mean, if you can't, you know, you know, if you can't serve as a great example, be a horrible warning. That's what I always say. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm tired of being the the victim of Namthrax. I figured I'll be the perpetrator for once. Exactly, you're a carrier. It rocks. I, I could, I can see it. Well, some people really went down with it. I uh, fortunately dodged it. My my feet are killing me still. Mm. I'm getting old. I, I you're you, you're smart. Killing. Smart not to uh, not to shake a bunch of people's hands at conventions. That's a that's the way to go. I don't like to touch people in yeah. general. So Just, even for trade trade show or not, I I tend to you know act like everyone I encounter is uh, you know needs to be at a safe distance. That's smart. Just fist bump yeah. your way through these things. You know, there's a lot of psychosis that we, we don't have time to get into, but it just, it's, it's odd. It, I, I, we don't have that kind of time, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> well, cool. Well, uh, we're going to talk all about Nam this week. So no surprise, my handle on Twitter is at Robertson.com and my um, Facebook is uh, I do Instagram kind of personally for myself, but I don't really do it for the business. Um, I don't know. Just a personal choice. There you go. So, You are tuned to episode 111 of the Jaya Enormous show, and this one's called Nam Right. And, you know, it's the world's biggest, craziest music product show. Anyone who was ever anyone at any time in music, mostly the 80s, let's be honest, was there. And, uh, and, you know, it's the Nam show, right straight from the tragic kingdom of Anaheim, California. And uh, I was there, your fearless host. Uh, I was I was working. I was hosting stuff for Enter Talk Radio occasionally, and in between all that work and and hosting and crap, I was uh, playing with all the latest um, and coolest music gear. Um, so you know, but I did have time, you know, thinking about you guys and thinking about the show. I did have time to wander through the halls and talk to some people about what they're doing at the show and their marketing and and such and such. So um, we're gonna we're gonna listen to some of those interviews today and and uh, and just discuss what's going on with some of those companies and, and discuss uh, you know just in general and kind of put a bow on Nam and this one that's what I'm talking about. So it's gonna be another fun filled, possibly award winning episode of the program. So uh, you tuned into a good one. Uh, let's get right into the interviews. That's what I would say. Well, you know, I'll just give my impressions first of all. Nam said that basically the show was was pretty much the same size as last year. Um, I, you know, when you ask people, you know, how, how is the traffic of the show? That's a tough one because it really depends on where you're standing when you say it, right? There's some people that are n- n- next to the doors and it's like, you know, and, and this has been the case, you know, just, just forever. It's just wherever you, you are, there is a, there's a different traffic flow. If you're standing in the middle of hall B on Saturday afternoon, it's crowded. You know, it's super crowded. You know, if you're if you're in A, you know, uh, around that same time, it's probably crowded. You know, uh, I noticed that the uh, the new ACC North Hall um, wasn't as crowded, but that's fine. It has, um, you know, uh, it's not as big of a hall, and and still there's probably still some people trying to find out where it is. You know, I mean, who knows? Or maybe they're you know not into all the you know the pro audio stuff. 
a lot of people come to the show and they you know want to see the guitars and they want to see the uh you know they want to stand in line for three hours and see a um an artist who may or may not have been famous at some point so anyway depend your your name show experience is always going to kind of be unique to you um i thought it was a good show it was a great show for my clients i thought that um NAM did a lot of cool things, including uh, pushing the perimeter of the show back um, where you didn't have to wait in those awful lines, you know, through metal detectors and stuff to try to get into the show. They really kept security at a minimum, yet it was very, you know, it was present, but it didn't really get in your way too much. And um, I didn't I didn't really have any problems getting anywhere I needed to go. So I thought that, you know, kudos to NAM for, um, you know, for, you know, managing the, uh, the flow of the show because the year before... Uh, you know, there were a lot of lines, there were a lot of people that were ticked off and that kind of thing. And, and, um, you know, good for them for, for listening and and making those choices. Uh, you know, let's dig right into some interviews. The first one I want to, uh, discuss is, uh, Vocal Mist. Uh, it's a, a company I found down in Holly and I really liked it. So anyway, here you go. Hey, this is Scott with May the Best Brand Win on InterTalk Radio, and I'm here outside the uh, Vocal Mist booth at uh, NAM 2019. I'm here with Gabby. So, Gabby, tell me about uh, what's Vocal Mist? Vocal Mist is a portable nebulizer for singers. It nebulizes isotonic saline and produces a cool mist that, when inhaled, has a lot of research proving that it hydrates your vocal cords, it makes phonation easier, so you don't have to push as hard to sing and to reach those upper registers. So when you don't have to push as hard to sing, there's less tension, and that means less chance of vocal injury and faster recovery. Fantastic. And how has the show been for you guys this time? It's been awesome. People have been really positive about it. We've had a, we've been demoing the product um, all day for the past three days, and we've had so many people come back, just sit down, do a full treatment, walk around Nam, and then come back and tell us how great they feel, especially after yelling in this really dry environment. Very, very cool. And my show is all about marketing and branding, the most exciting topics at Nam, obviously. Uh, tell me, what, what kind of things are you guys doing to get the word out about Vocal Mist? So we're pretty new. We just started in October, um, and we've really been networking with um, the singer community. We're located in Los Angeles, and there's a big professional singer community here, so that's been really helpful. And then we just started entering that social media world and um, really trying to promote our brand to to people on Instagram and and Facebook and stuff like that. Um, And as far as marketing goes... I think that what makes us our brand unique is that Vocal Mist really serves the traveling musician. So people who gig really heavy, people who um, you know travel, they're on planes, they're driving from city to city, they're changing environments all the time, which can be really hard on your voice. Um, and the Vocal Mist also has a hands-free option. So you can strap it to your face and drive to your gig. You can warm up with your guitar and warm up your voice at the same time. So um, I think that's really what makes us unique, and that's what a lot of people have um, responded to. Very nice. Uh, So how much is the product, and where do people find out more information? Sure. So the product retails for $89. Um, You can buy it at myvocalmist.com. We also encourage people to buy it in bundles with the isotonic saline because, like I said, there's a lot of research showing how helpful that is. Um, And those bundles vary from a 12-pack to a 100-pack of saline. And that's also on our website, myvocalmist.com. Fantastic. Well, you heard it here, folks. Uh, Vocal Mist. Make sure you go out and check it out if you're a singer. Uh, I've been been here with Gabby at the NAMM Show. Uh, Thanks very much, Gabby. Thank you. Very, very cool. So that was Vocal Mist, and that thing really did work. I got to say, people, you know, my voice was uh, really messed up, and I, um, you know, by the the third day when I actually um, met them, and then I uh, I tried the Vocal Mist, and it it really, really worked. It you know, it worked its magic and kind of kept my my voice on track. So very cool. Uh, nice shout out to them. Next next up, we got Band Lab, one of my clients, and uh, this is a fun interview. Here you go. Hey, you're with Scott with May the Best Brand Win on Intertalk Radio, and I'm here with Lauren Henry Parsons from Band Lab Technologies, one of my own clients here. And uh, we're here at NAM. My first question, we're going to do some hard-hitting journalism here. Why are you so incredibly awesome? Oh, 
Oh my god, that's too kind. Uh, I would say it's a combination of coming from convict blood, as I am an Australian, and you know, a criminal element sometimes gets you far apart. But I, I think also just like feeling the energy and wanting to like share the joy and the excitement of the stuff that we've been working on. I feel a real sense of responsibility. You know, my team works so hard on the products that to not bring them to the public in a way that shows respect to the effort that's been put into them and the awesomeness of the product would be really missing an opportunity. So I'm here to like shine light on the great stuff that my team is doing and I got a, a lot of weight on my shoulders for that. Very, very cool. And you've, I mean, you know, the, this company has some interesting brand challenges in the sense that you've grown, you know, it's grown by acquisition, had some acquisitions, and now you have to kind of make sense of that in sort of a family environment here at NAM. How do you go about doing that? I think the first thing to think about is we're very lucky to have some very clear brand strategy, but we are united as BandLab Technologies, no matter what brand we are, by a set of values. All of our brands subscribe to that value. So it's about having passion. It's about innovation. It's about finding ways to do things more efficiently. It's about empowering users, empowering musicians, empowering the people who we want to look after and at the same time, while we're united by those family values, that allows each of our brands, Mono, Heritage, Harmony, Tysco, and BandLab, as well as Cakewalk by BandLab, to have their own personalities. So they're sort of united by that family set of values, but they get to shine with their own individual personalities. Yeah, absolutely. How has the NAM show been for BandLab this year? Look, I think we've had some real excitement. People have, we've seen, I've loved seeing the 14, 15, 16 year olds coming along and trying out BandLab, which is our social music platform. We've just released a thing called Creator Kits. It's free and available online on any phone, like smartphone, obviously, or web platform. Um, but seeing them come in, try it out and get it straight away, just playing with the pads, understanding, making beats and loops. It's really exciting to see where the rubber hits the road with your product. We work all the way over in Singapore or in the factories in the USA for the guitars and it's really cool when you can put a product in someone's hand and see the delight that they get from it and they're you know they're really excited to be having it too nice nice and where do people find out more about all these products and everything you're doing good question if you want to see the family go to bandlabtechnologies.com but then we've also got harmony.co tysco.com and monocreators.com along with heritage guitars fantastic well you've been listening to Lauren with bandlab technologies this is Scott from May the Best Brand Win thanks Lauren Thanks so much for having me, and may the best parents win indeed. <laughs> there you go. That's Band Lab. Very, very cool. And then right uh, down the hall from uh, Band Lab, I ran into Adam Hall, and they were doing a kind of a cool thing with um, uh, with the VW bus out front that you may have seen. Uh, I talked to them a little bit about that. That's uh, coming up next. Hey, this is Scott with May the Best Brand Win here at the show floor in NAM, and I'm with Faith from Adam Hall, and and they're doing some interesting things at the show. Uh, Faith will just tell me about the VW bus they have parked outside, what they're doing with that. So, Faith, tell me what you guys are doing at the show and, and why it's cool. Oh, yeah, sure. So, Adam Hall, we are a parent company. It's based out of Germany, so we have five different brands uh, that we work with. We have the LD Systems, the Gravity Stands. We also have our new Curve speakers that are Bluetooth and battery-based, as well as our Defender cord covers uh, and Cameo lights. So we wanted to showcase how it's all fully functional, and you can use it as a mobile uh, just setup, so you can have quick jam sessions outside. And the VW bus was a really neat way for us to do this outdoors without the noise restrictions of, you know, the NAMM show, and just be able to have bands come up and play and hook up. And some of them were scheduled, so we were able to have some nice performances as well. Very, very nice. And how's the show been going for you guys? It's been good. A lot of traffic, a lot of meetings, uh, a lot of people that have never seen us before, and then other guys that carry us all the time, and they just want to come by and, and meet us face-to-face. -face. That's awesome. And if people want to find out more about all the various brands that you have going on, uh, where do they go? Well, let's see here. Probably, I would say adamhall.com, but let me double-check. <laughs> okay. She is double-checking. The, the, she is double-checking the URL. She's coming back. Here she comes. That is it. Yeah, adamhall.com. Wonderful. Well, you guys have been listening to Faith with Adam Hall, and this is Scott with Made the Best Brand Win, signing off for NAM for now. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, a lot of cool things that Adam Hall was uh, doing at the show, and uh, I like the VW bus. That was neat. Let's, uh, let's run right into Morley, see what Morley's got going on. 
Hey, this is Scott with May the Best Brand Win on Intertalk Radio, and I'm here with Pete from uh, Morley, and uh, we're just talking here at the NAMM show, seeing what's what's going on with Morley this week, this uh, year at the show, Pete. Well, that's, this year is our 50th anniversary. That's probably the biggest news. You know, uh, our origins go back in the early 60s, but 1969 is the first year, is kind of the year that we uh, first series just started making guitar effects pedals. Fantastic. Any new products this year? Oh, yes, we got a couple. So um, the first one is our Chrome Bundle, which is a limited set of 300. Just kind of a nice uh, collectible series that we made for the 50th anniversary. The next up, we have our ABC Pro and ABY Pro Selectors. Now, we're, uh, we're mainly known for wahs and volumes, but also our utility pedals. Our ABY is one of our best sellers. And uh, we got a lot of feedback over the years. We launched our ABY in its current incarnation about 27 years ago. And uh, one of the things we uh, our customers told us is that when you're using it for multiple amps, sometimes you can run into grounding issues, create ground loops. So we wanted to make the ultimate ABY and uh, ABC selectors. So we um, kind of at the heart of them, we've got our own custom in-house transformer, silent switching, ground lifts, reverse polarity, a higher enclosure for easy access. So a lot of goodies that um, you know, to make sure that it ensures a higher rate of success of dealing with hum issues. Fantastic. How's the show been for you guys? It's been great, and then uh, it's been very busy. You know, it's uh, you know I've been to about nine NAM shows so far, and you know this one uh, it, it seems like every year it's growing and growing. And uh, we also got we got one more new product too, which is our uh, it, it's kind of you know the grand finale. It's our uh, mini classic switchless wad. So uh, a lot of our wads, you know, they're very well built. They could be a little higher priced, but we wanted to hit the entry level market. So. For this damn show, we're dropping the Mini Classic Switchless Watt. It has all the great features Morley's are known for, but it's only 99 bucks. Oh, wow. That, that's great. Yep, 99 bucks out the door, and uh, we wanted to make sure everyone can get a chance to try it Morley if they're you know just started play or if they're on a limited budget. And uh, we've been working very hard for it about two years, and we're, we're finally ready to launch it at the show. Well, fantastic. What's the, what's the rest of the marketing mix look like for Morley? What else what, what really works for you guys? Well, um, one thing that uh, we're kind of looking towards the future, um, influencers on YouTube, Instagram, uh, we're moving away, I guess, from print advertising. But, uh, you know, kind of for this year, we're going to be focusing on partnering with some influencers, getting our product out there, getting demo videos, and uh, using our social media. Let's go ahead and stop it there. Very, very cool. So Morley, man, lots of stuff going on, especially that $99 wah pedal, which I know they got a lot of good media coverage on. And um, that's what's going, what's happening for the uh, first half of this show. Uh, you were tuned to May the Best Brand Win on Intertalk Media, the undisputed leader in music biz talk. Come on back. We're going to talk about who's winning and losing. And then we got more NAM interviews coming up. See you in a few. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. This is Jackie Bertoni from Jackie's Groove. Come join me weekly on my journey through the music business as I take you behind the velvet rope, interviewing industry notables such as Al DiMiola, Michael McDonald, and Al Jarreau, to name but a few. Listen to their stories on being in the studios recording number one hits and onto the stages throughout the globe. Allow me to be your music historian. You can hear me live every Monday at 2 p.m. and every Wednesday at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time or 24-7 on Jackie'sGroove.com. Ready to get your groove on? Hi, I'm Tim Dolbear, the host of Sound Experience on Intertalk Radio. Each week, I talk with top professional audio engineers, producers, musicians, and the manufacturers that make the tools that we use in the studio each and every day. From capturing the perfect take to mastering your final release and the tools and how the pros use them, we are going to dive deep into their process and learn from their experience. I look forward to you joining us each week on Sound Experience with me, your host, Tim Dolbear. Make this your vinyl night. I'm John J.R. Robinson, and every week, music creation comes alive through stories, experiences, and sounds when vinyl records filled our hearts and minds. My friends and I share our tips and techniques used in creation of iconic tracks for recording artists such as Michael Jackson, Eric Clapton, Quincy Jones, and Steve Winwood, to name a few. Vinyl has emerged hot, and the soul of vinyl defines art and passion which burns deepest at night. Tune in every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on entertalkradio.com.
May the best brand win with Scott Robertson's Music Biz Marketing Strategies. Now, here's your host, Scott Robertson. Hey, everybody. It is Friday. You are so super incredibly smart because you are tuned to May the Best Brand Win on Intertalk Media, the undisputed leader in music biz talk. We've been talking about Nam. Paul B's with us, recovering from Nam. Did you get out and see that $99 wah pedal that Morley had, by the way? That's no, cool. no, I did not. Did you get out and see anything, or I, were you guys just I, stuck shooting the whole time? Uh, stuck shooting. The only stuff I saw is the stuff that I was filming. I didn't get to really play around with anything. Uh, I, I think my like walk, walk around and like you know try stuff out. Like Nam days are over. It's always just like a crazy breakneck. You know, just lots of like pr- productions and work. It's it's no, it's nothing but work. Nothing, it's nothing, but, but, it's, nothing but work and germs. Work in germs. Did you see the harmony guitars, by the way, that we brought over for Bandlab? Did you see that that segment? I, I uh, no, no. I, I was out doing some things. Are yeah, you gotta you gotta play those at some point. They're so cool, man. Nice, nice, great, great guitars. I got a chance to. Um, one of the cool things about working with an exhibitor like Bandlab is you can kind of play their their stuff before the hall opens, and so I spent some time playing through the harmony guitars and amps. And man, they are they are so much better than anything I own. I gotta say, <laughs> <laughs> they're so much better than anything I have. It is just not right. even funny. Well, you gotta get them to hook you up. Goals, goals. You know, now you're like, I gotta have that. All right, well, let's get into who's winning and losing um, out, outside the rest of the world. Um, man, we're all losing because of robocalls. Uh, report came out this week, 26 billion spam calls in 2018. That's up 46% than the total number of robocalls in 2017. I'll say that again. Consumers in the United States, like you, like me, received a whopping 26.3 billion, with a B, robocalls in 2018 and that's a 46% increase um, over robocalls there's um, the Fed, the FCC is uh, looking into people that are uh, doing caller ID spoofing you know where, the, where you get a call from your own number or you get a call from something and, and that, that kind of thing you know I just I mean I have to say like I say with everything in telemarketing if you work in telemarketing leave right now Put the headset down, walk away. Everyone hates you. No one wants what you are selling. No one wants to hear it like that. You are an annoyance, an interruption. If we knew where you lived, we'd show up there and things would get violent. Don't do it. To marketers that have telemarketing in your marketing plan, you are idiots. You could not be dumber. Don't do it. Okay? I hope that you get fined. I hope that you get imprisoned. I hope that your family suffers. Don't do telemarketing. Don't do robocalls. They suck, and you suck if you're involved with them too. Okay? That is my public service announcement. We should not be dealing with 26 billion spam calls from you morons. Stop it. Stop it. We're all losing. You're helping us all to lose. It's bad. You know who's winning is McDonald's. McDonald's, uh, they, they win a lot of ways. But in social media, there's, there was an article that came out in PR Week um, uh, last week that talked about, you know, Wendy's is trolling on McDonald's. Burger King is trolling on McDonald's. But one thing that you may notice, maybe you noticed, maybe you didn't, is the fact that McDonald's doesn't really fight back on social media. They pretty much don't. They pretty much, you know, say, hey, that's well done. That, you know, well done. That, you know. McDonald's is still the largest fast food restaurant by a lot in terms of number of franchises, in terms of revenue, in terms of all of those kind of things, right? But you're, but you know, you see Wendy's, you know, going after them, and they created like the hashtag Whopper Detour stunt last month and all these kind of things, and you know, uh, the the um, uh, SVP of U.S. Comms for McDonald's, I love what she said about it. She said, "You have to go on the offense. There has to be something you stand for that's appealing." Um, you know, what is the case proactively that you're making? You know, the nature of leadership brands is that you get to a point where you understand real ROI is being mindful of and responsive to competition. But you don't stay a leadership brand by simply responding to competition. You do it by continuing to innovate and staying customer focused. See, that's really smart. That's really, really smart. That, you know, that 
that's not being goaded into a fight with number two and number three where they can like use your spotlight to elevate themselves, right? Very, very, but you see, you see leaders in categories get baited like this all the time, but all of you should learn from McDonald's. Do what McDonald's does, right? They don't respond to the stuff like that. And they make sure that they instead are trying to be a leadership brand and trying to, you know, lead by their own example. And they're trying to set the tone for those other things. Uh, but I think it's a it's a fascinating article. If you want to read it, it's a PRweek.com, and it's a Why McDonald's Doesn't Fight Social Media Wars. Um, great uh, great story, and um, and definitely kudos to McDonald's for continuing to uh, to stay above all that stuff. And that's probably why we don't talk about them that much uh, in you know in social media in a negative way too. Smart man, Apple, 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 Apple. So uh, this week, Apple's been having a problem when they discovered a major. FaceTime bug that lets you eavesdrop on any iPhone user. Uh, and then, of course, everybody freaked out and said, oh, Apple, you know, you're such defenders of privacy, but yet you have this FaceTime bug where people can listen to you and, and, and you know, they can, spy, they can spy on you through your iPhone and this kind of thing. And, of course, Apple came out and said, shut off FaceTime and kind of do, and, and do all those kind of things. I find it a bit ironic that a lot of those people that were complaining about being able to listen on FaceTime, it's like you have an Alexa in your house, right? What do you think she's doing? What do you think Alexa does? I'll give you a spoiler alert. She listens to you all the time. She transcribes your information and she sends it to other people to sell. That's what she does. Okay? So you complaining about FaceTime, it's like, you know, you know, it's uh stupid is the word I'm searching for. Stu- really stupid. And uh um you know, yeah, there's a bug in Apple's, you know, FaceTime and, and you know, people are saying, I'm going to ditch my iPhone because of it. They fixed the bug already. They fixed the bug in like three days. Okay. They determined the bug. They fixed the bug. You download the n- newest uh, 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 iOS patch or what have you that kind of auto updates to your phone anyway. And and it's fixed. But I do think it's important to, to re- remind everyone that you have intentionally bugged your homes with millions and millions of Alexa-driven devices that are on 24-7, and they're listening to you. And that's a company, you know, let's face it, that loves to sell data, has no privacy concerns of you. They don't care about your privacy. They don't care about anything having to do with that. They never have made a statement about it. They do not care. So the bottom line is you bugged your own house and then you're upset about FaceTime for doing the same thing, but it's like, you know, if you're really concerned about privacy, you might want to chat, have a little chat with Alexa. Also on the Apple Facebook front, which I thought was kind of interesting um, this week, Apple blocked Facebook from running its internal iOS apps because it basically said Facebook can't be trusted. And, um, you know, with some of its, uh, because, you know, they, Facebook would, you know, sell its own mother for a good price and some magic beans, right? So it's like, you know, uh, I, I think that's interesting, you know, because Apple is known for being this great, this, this great, like, defender of privacy. And then yet their platform, they have to work with these other companies who, let's just be honest, aren't. And so then they have to kind of, they have to kind of figure that whole thing out, right? But, um, Apple did block Facebook from running the apps. I think they've restored it by now. They've they've come to an agreement now that that uh, Facebook's not going to be uh, you know selling all the uh, you know all the data from that or using it in uh, improper ways. But man, this privacy stuff. As a communicator, if you're listening to this as a communicator, we you know this is our business now. This is our business. Figuring out um, you know how to get privacy right. Because I will guarantee you one thing: if you get privacy wrong. Your relationship that you worked so hard to foster with that consumer is over. You know, it is over. And it won't even be a nice breakup. I mean, they'll just, you're, they're just gone, right? So you got to get that stuff right. Um, big story came out this week on, um, uh, let's see, it, well, it actually came out from a lot of different places, but uh, I saw it from the New York Times, but it was Can Social Networks Regain Momentum in 2019? And this is kind of interesting. Um, what you're seeing is the social networking sites engagement and loyalty rankings are falling a bit, which is something that we hadn't seen. Facebook is down. Pinterest is down. Twitter is down. Snapchat is down. Instagram is down. All these kind of things. 
Uh, Twitter is still really struggling to increase platform engagement. It's posting decrease of users. You have fake followers everywhere. You have all these kind of things, you know, uh, going on. And and there's really kind of an, an examination that, you know, are we as Americans and our people around the world, are we over social media? You know, is it is like, you know, is it just not as exciting anymore and we're moving on? I don't quite see it like that, but I do see that, um, and, and I and I mean, I have to say, you know, social media was created because there was sort of a um, a vacuum missing of trust, right? Lost trust in the government, lost trust in organized religion, lost trust in business. Who can you trust? You can trust people that you know, and then and you know that whole movement's called the groundswell, right? From the book of the same name, the groundswell really started. Uh, social media, or you know, uh, so shortly after the turn of the century, and marketing could very well be the reason why it ends. By the way, because marketing, with its sort of irresponsible use of, um, you know, like we can't get away from talking about, of of using people's data, of spying on people, of sending, you know, quote unquote targeted ads that are actually, you know, nothing. Nobody wants ads on social media. And those kind of things, and and really nobody has tolerance for ads on social media either. Um, you you just kind of see all these things converging, right? And I think it's going to be a real fascinating um, thing to continue to watch. Will marketing, you know, be the reason, uh, you know, you know why social media continues to fall? Are people looking for the next marketing free sort of network that they can get into? And then the irony, you know, hits you right in the face, which is if the social media network can't make money by selling your data and sending you advertising and there's no money around there, then they, you know, collapse and die. And that's what happens. Um, you know, and, and just a related story, um, the the media industry is on is going through huge upheaval right now. I don't know if you know this, but more than a thousand uh, journalists have been laid off uh, in the past week uh, from outlets like BuzzFeed, HuffPost, and Gannett, the nation's largest newspaper chain. Uh, BuzzFeed's laying off fifteen percent of its workforce. Um, you know, uh, brands like you know Verizon, which owns uh, you know brands like HuffPost, AOL, Yahoo News. And Gannett, they're slashing these jobs. They're slashing journalists, right? So, in so as someone in public relations, I follow what's going on in journalism. And here's what's going on in journalism: nothing good, because we're losing journalists right and left. And then everybody wants to know why there's so much bias in the news, why there's so much terrible reporting, why there's so many typos, why there's so much lack of fact checking. Here's why: because we, as consumers, we don't want to pay for uh, news anymore. We consider news to be free. It's not. And um, we don't want to be advertised to, uh, we, you know, which is so we set up ad blockers and then all the advertising dollars go away and then all the people get laid off. Right. So that's what's happening to journalism in this country. That's what has happened to it. That is what is, is happening to it. And we kind of need like a PSA campaign. Like I think all media need to get on, get on their PSA wagon, public service announcement wagon and start saying, look. When you guys don't pay for news, we have a real problem in this country, uh, you know, a real problem, you know, for the fourth estate, which is going to be the fact that there's not going to be anybody working in it, you know, in, in the coming years. And then all of your everybody's complaints about, you know, why is there so much bias again? You know, why is there so many factual errors? Because people, you know, aren't getting paid to do the job and you get crappy work just like in any industry, you know, and I, you know, I just got to, I got to throw it out there. The fact that a buddy of mine uh, sent me a thing and said, I'm, I'm doing uh, LinkedIn lead generation. And you know what I, how I think about lead in LinkedIn, LinkedIn lead generation. I think it's terrible. And so I said, well, I think this is, this is a bad idea. You shouldn't be doing this. And I, I said, and you know, you're a reporter for like, you know, three major national news outlets. Why the hell are you, uh, you know, in bottom feeding and marketing and doing lead generation on LinkedIn, which is like bottom feeding total. And, and this person got back to me and said, oh, well, none of those publications pay me. And I kind of had to let that sink in. And I was like, this national columnist is not getting paid to write stories for, you know, uh, for, for, it's like, and how long are you going to be able to do that? Last I checked, you know, food and electricity, they cost real money. They're not going to take an article in like a, some sort of a, a crazy barter arrangement that you're going to set up. 
we got we got a real problem when it comes to the media industry and journalism in this country. We got a real problem that needs to be fixed. I think we need to reset the public a bit and say, look, we, there needs to be some media outlets that launch and say, look, people are going to have to pay for this stuff. You're going to you're going to have to pay for this content. Make the content so good that people will pay for it, and then you're going to be able to, you know, employ people just like the good old days. Maybe even launch something that, that is like at more advertising free kind of stuff, and you could attract some of those, uh, you know, privacy concerned individuals and that kind of fun stuff. I don't know. Maybe need to devote a whole show to uh, dealing with the state of journalism in this country. But certainly, we lost a thousand good reporters in the past week uh, to layoffs. Oh, so we're definitely losing there. Uh, the Golden Globes Fiji Water model is now suing Fiji Water, uh, which is ironic, I thought. So, um, and this story comes from uh, page six dot com. Um, kind of interesting. So, the model, you know, who went viral after photobombing the red carpet photos at the Golden Globes, holding a tray of Fiji water bottles. She was like in every celebrity photo. Um, her name is Kelleth Colbert. And her real name is Kelly Steinbach. I don't know why she has two names, by the way. She's suing Fiji Water for Water Company, claiming they used her viral internet fame to promote their product. And they created cardboard cutouts of her for use in a cardboard cutout marketing campaign. People could take their picture with and stuff. And they and they apparently didn't ask her to use her image and that kind of thing. And her agreement didn't uh, cover that. So she's suing them. And, of course, um, what does the other side say? The other side says, no, she uh, was... She, Basically, they said um, what what they say. They did not pressure her in any way, and they created a fair deal with her. And um, you know, yada yada yada. The legal team claims the papers that she signed, um, you know, were in agreement. And now, now it's the whole thing's going to go to court over the over the Fiji water thing. So I think Fiji water is certainly losing, and possibly this water model is. Um, you know, she's either winning or losing, depending on if she's able to score more work or. She gets her settlement or, or you know, how that, that whole thing goes. But it just goes to show, too, by the way, it's possible that Fiji moved a little too soon on this. It's possible that they, in the to try to capitalize on the, you know, the heat from the Golden Globes or whatever, they tried to get these cardboard cutouts out and they didn't get, you know, the proper model release. And, you know, details count in marketing. It's really, really important to make sure you got your, your stuff together. Otherwise, you know, bad things like this could happen. And that's who's winning and losing this week, folks. Uh, come on back. We got lots more NAM interviews for you. We'll see you in a few. Hi, I'm Tim Dolbear, the host of Sound Experience on Intertalk Radio. Each week, I talk with top professional audio engineers, producers, musicians, and the manufacturers that make the tools that we use in the studio each and every day. From capturing the perfect take to mastering your final release, and the tools and how the pros use them, we are going to dive deep into their process and learn from their experience. I look forward to you joining us each week on Sound Experience with me, your host, Tim Dolbear. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio, to sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver deliver in rehearsal on stage and into the big time dropping beats shredding guitar or making the crowd roar whatever you dream pitbull audio can help make it happen we are pitbull audio we want you to play it loud pitbullaudio.com make this your vinyl night i'm john jr robinson and every week music creation comes alive through stories experiences and sounds when vinyl records filled our hearts and minds my friends and I share our tips and techniques used in creation of iconic tracks for recording artists such as Michael Jackson, Eric Clapton, Quincy Jones, and Steve Winwood, to name a few. Vinyl has emerged hot, and the soul of vinyl defines art and passion, which burns deepest at night. Tune in every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on entertalkradio.com. This is Jackie Bertoni from Jackie's Groove. Come join me weekly on my journey through the music business as I take you behind the velvet rope, interviewing industry notables such as Al Miola. Michael McDonald, and Al Jarreau, to name but a few. Listen to their stories on being in the studios recording number one hits and onto the stages throughout the globe. Allow me to be your music historian. You can hear me live every Monday at 2 p.m. and every Wednesday at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time or 24-7 on Jackie'sGroove.com. Ready to get your groove on?
May the best brand win with Scott Robertson's Music Biz Marketing Strategies. Now, here's your host, Scott Robertson. Hey, hey, everybody. It is still Friday, and you are still tuned to May the Best Brand Win on Intertalk Media, the undisputed leader in Music Biz Talk. I am still your host, and we are still talking about NAM. So, uh, you know, without further ado, let's uh, let's dive right in and, and talk to, and, and see what's going on with uh, Rosini Guitars. Hey, this is Scott with May the Best Brand Win, and I'm here with Sani uh, outside the Rosini uh, Brazilian Guitar Exhibit at NAM 2019. So, Sani, tell us about what you guys are trying to do at the show. So we are here to show the Brazilian instruments and also looking for a distribution here in the United States. We are a very good brand in Brazil, so we keep growing, and then we decided to look for a new opportunity. Nice. And what makes the Rosini brand so strong in Brazil? Uh, we use natural woods, all, most of them Brazilian woods, and we have a rare woods in Brazil, so people like that. Fantastic. And uh, and like you're looking for distribution. Um, and you said you've been doing it for, for a few years here in the United States. What, um, what are people saying? What's the feedback you've been getting? People like it because the sounds of the wood is different and also the how the, our instruments look like because each one is different. None of our instruments are similar. All of them are unique. They are all handmade and with the Brazilian woods. Okay, so besides uh, Latin America, besides uh, you know South America, that kind of thing, um, what about um, anywhere else in the world that you guys are going to be looking for distribution at this time? the store that we work on Germany, Israel, Japan. So people like our we are exporting year by year. Nice, nice. And my show is all about branding and and marketing. So um what does the Rosini brand stand for, do you think in Brazil? Handmade in Brazil because most of the companies nowadays are making guitars in China and we are the only one that's still doing in Brazil. Nice. Very, very cool. Well, you guys have been listening to Sani from the Rosini uh, Guitar Brand from Brazil. Uh, thanks very much for spending some time with me, Sani. Thank you. Pleasure. Very, very cool. So people come to the show for a lot of different reasons. This, the company is looking for uh, for distribution and looking to uh, to grow um, a great Brazilian brand um, right here in the United States. So anyway, wishing them a lot of luck. Uh, and one, the next one is um, is Hook Audio. Uh, they have a really cool like binaural mic that really helps you mic things better from your uh, mobile devices, your smart devices, and really change the sound because of the way the mic is designed. It was really cool. Something I ran into up with ACC North. Um, anyway, here, that, here comes that one. And win on Intertalk Media. We're here talking with Anthony, uh, founder CEO of Hook Audio from New York. Uh, Anthony, tell us all about what's going on with Hook Audio and, and real 3D audio. Definitely. We make Hookverse. It's the world's first pair of binaural 3D audio recording wireless headphones. Now, some people might be asking, what is binaural 3D audio? Well, it's audio captured identically to the way we hear the world. Uh, binaural audio has been around for quite a while, but it's always been in these sort of clunky, very expensive, adapter-heavy pieces of equipment. We've brought binaural 3D audio recording to the masses by putting it into a product that we already own, a pair of Bluetooth headphones. So the Hookverse pairs with your phone, acts like a regular pair of headphones, lets you listen to music, take hands-free calls. Uh, but the minute you go to capture a video or an audio file, it overrides the built-in mic and grabs it from the mics in each of your ears. We use a mobile app that pairs with a proprietary Bluetooth recording codec that we've built from the ground up. We're actually sending two channels of lossless audio over Bluetooth uh, to Android and iPhone. If you don't want to use Bluetooth, we include a recording cable, which plugs into the verse, turns it into a wired microphone, and uh, can connect to a DSLR, field recorder, or GoPro. It's the most versatile binaural microphone on the market, also Bluetooth headphones, and they cost $240. Very cool. I was just listening to it, and there really is quite a difference. Uh, just the, the iPhone demo that uh, somebody was playing for me earlier. There really is quite a difference. Um, so, how did you how did you come up with this? 
So I used to be a theatrical sound designer. As you mentioned, I, I'm from New York. Um, I used to make sound effects for the Broadway musicals and tour around the country writing original music for plays. So making sound and creating sound and understanding how it works in spaces has always been my forte. Um, we used to use these binaural microphones in theater. We'd archive the productions and we'd set up this dummy head in the seats. And I'd be sitting there setting up a dummy head thinking to myself, Use your head, you dummy. What are we doing here? You know, yeah, yeah. We're using this very expensive piece of equipment to capture this amazing type audio, and no one knows about it. The most amazing thing about binaural is that you can experience it on any pair of headphones. You don't have to have any special algorithms or, or playback. Um, so I thought, you know, look, this needs to come to phones. This is the way to do it. People aren't going to walk out the door and be like, let me grab my phone, my headphones, my microphones. But they might do it if it's embedded in a piece they already own. That's what the hope is for. Nice. And so how can people find out more about this product? Yeah, I would encourage everyone to check out our website. It's hookaudio.com. That's H-O-O-K-E audio.com. And if you want to hear 3D audio captured with the verse, check out our YouTube. It's youtube.com slash hookaudio. Fantastic. Well, you guys have been listening to Anthony, uh, founder and CEO of Hook Audio uh, here at the NAMM Show 2019. Anthony, thanks for spending time with me. Thanks so much, Scott. I appreciate you stopping by. Very, very cool company. Definitely check them out. Also, um, I ran into a, a really cool um, like beat creator, loop creator for hip-hop artists called Hip Hop Creator. There you go. And that's what's next. Hey, this is Scott Robertson with May the Best Brand Win on Intertalk Media, and I'm here with Sam, and we're talking about Hip Hop Creator. So, Sam, uh, tell us uh, at the NAM Show here about Hip Hop Creator. All right, thank you very much. Yeah, this is the newest release from Realitone. Uh, we're just launching this new updated version for NAM, and Hip Hop Creator is an all-inclusive sample library for the creation of hip hop music. It's designed to be both useful for the novice and also the more experienced composer. Um, so we start with, with a, a battery of, of, of very high-quality samples, drum sounds, bass sounds, keyboard sounds, uh, vocal samples, all recorded at our studio in Hollywood. Um, and then we have these global presets, which were pro produced by different uh, industry uh, hip-hop producers. Uh, like we can, we can, will they, will they be able to hear if I launch some? Yeah, go ahead. Let's hear a little bit. Scroll through a couple just for now. Um, so here's one of them. It makes me want to freestyle over that. That sounds good. I like that. One of the cool things about this program is um, we have these built-in complexity sliders. So we can start with any of these presets, and then we can adjust the sort of the busyness or the simplicity of the track. Um, if I launch it and then slide this slider all the way to the right, you kind of hear all the individual elements getting busier. Or also to the left, you hear everything get kind of simplified. So it gives you a lot of control over what you can do, and then you can also go into the individual elements of the track. So right now we've got, on this preset, we've got uh, five different percussion elements and two keyboards and a bass and a vocal sample. And we can go in and mix and match those. We can uh, you know, change up the keyboard pattern. We can also change up the keyboard sound. Um, we can change up the complexity of the keyboard pattern. Um, so there's a lot of control over this. So, so again, it's, um, it sounds great right out of the box, and you can also get in and kind of tweak the parameters so you have a lot of control over you know, making it your own. That's awesome. Is the show going good for you? It's going great, yeah. We've had a lot of, a lot of people stopping by. Got to, got to meet a lot of interesting people. It's been fun walking around and, and seeing everything here. It's, it's been a really great time so far. Fantastic. Well, where can people find out more about and actually buy this software? Uh, the website is uh, www.realitone.com, and we've got uh, eight or nine sample libraries available there right now, and Hip Hop Creator is for sale. Uh, th that's where you can find it. It's uh, normally it's for $200, and right now we've got a NAM special going for 150 Nice. We well, heard it here first. You've been listening to Sam uh, from Realitone talking about Hip Hop Creator at NAM 2019. Thanks for spending some time with me, Sam. Thanks so much for stopping by. We appreciate it. Very, very cool. That was a neat piece of software. Uh, up next is a Orange County company uh, called Y Digital Systems. Let's hear from them. Hey, it's Scott with May the Best Brand Win, and I'm here with Pierre from Y Digital Systems. So, Pierre, you're at the NAM show. What do you guys have new for Y Digital Systems this year? We have our Y Pro Audio Matrix, an audio distribution system, one transmitter, up to 300 receiver, digital audio distribution in stereo. 
Very, very cool. So you're getting rid of speaker cables. No more cables. Beautiful uh, sound quality. At the same time, you also get the range that you want, anywhere from 750 feet. And we have uh, additional accessories like power antenna. will give you one mile radius if you want to go that far out in your audio distribution. Nice, nice. And how are you guys spreading the word, aside from your presence here at NAMM, how are you spreading the word about uh, all your great products from Y Digital? We do some presentations and some demos, uh, but at the same time, we utilize our relationship with our dealers and distributors to promote the product at the shows. Nice. And how's the, is the response from the dealers been pretty strong about the new products? Very, very strong. Very strong. We're excited about it. Wonderful. And you guys always have, uh, I mean, w- uh, is this the last in that product line? Or are you look, are, I mean, you're always looking for innovation, I'm sure. So what, what's, what's coming up next for you guys? Well... The audio matrix is a unique technology where we're able to do this multicast audio distribution, but at the same time, the future of this technology is giving you the 360 immersive audio. So it's no longer stereo left and right, but actually imagine yourself going into this, the closest thing to nature, that you're covering sound from all over in 360 degrees. So you can hear that whoosh going up above and beyond you and getting you in an environment that's absolutely amazing. So that's the future. So you'll be able to watch, listen, and be completely immersed with that audio in an unbelievable way. Nice. I, and I bet you can uh, you can solve a lot of feedback problems, too, with uh, different speaker placements uh, with, uh, with the Matrix. Oh, absolutely. The Matrix, the matrix not only the, the feedback issue, the idea behind the Matrix is... Uh, to have the ability to take the sound, bring it down from stage, and carry the sound using satellite speakers into the crowd. Therefore, there's less noise, less uh, 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 feedback, and at the same time, it's much more enjoyable for the audience to listen to the music in a much quality at a lower level. Uh, plus, taking all the hazards of the cables that, that that's out there. Very true. Well, cool. Well, this is, you've been listening to uh, Pierre from Y Digital Systems. They have some great, innovative digital products here at NAM. Uh, Pierre, where can people find out more about your products? They can come to our uh, website at uh, widigitalsystems.com, and they can take a look at that product that we have. Fantastic. Well, thanks for spending some time with me today, Pierre. Enjoy the rest of the NAM show. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Very cool. Great company. Definitely one you want to uh, check out. They have some uh, some fantastic technology, um, especially that Matrix uh, thing where they're trying to um, make uh, basically any they, – they can run it in, into any powered speaker and kind of make that uh, – get rid of your speaker cable uh, issues that you have. So very, very cool. Uh, the last one I have is from a company called uh, Pedal Evolution, and they talk about pedal pods. This is a really innovative um, new thing they're trying to do with guitar pedal, uh, kind of powering guitar pedals. So I'll let them tell you about it. Here you go. Hey, this is Scott with May the Best Brand Win on Air Talk Radio. I'm here outside the uh, Pedal Evolution booth here at the NAMM Show 2019, talking with Jerry. So, Jerry, this is your first time at the show. Tell us all about Pedal Pods. Yes, this is our first year here. What Pedal Pods is is a modular pedal board solution that not only gives you the ability to grow your pedal board with depth and height, but we also have integrated circuits that give you the ability to select from five to 18 volts per pedal, 500 milliamps with a peak of 750 milliamps. We also have two loops of audio that you can select in and out of the channel. And we also have on the front end selectable buffers that you can also add or remove. That's about it. Really cool stuff. Your first year at the show, how'd it go for you? Extremely well. Better than we would have ever expected. So very happy. Now, are you looking to find dealers? Or are you looking to uh, do more, look for a distributor? What are you trying to do? We're actually looking a little bit of both. On this one, the parts that we have here are pre-production parts. So we were really soliciting input from uh, from people at the show on what they would like to see changed. It's been unbelievable, the support. People have been excited. There's been some people that have been a little apprehensive because it's so new and radical. But it's it's gone over very well, like I said, better than we could have ever expected. As far as who we're looking for, on the dealer side of it, distribution side, we'll always take uh, and entertain those uh, those people. Right now, currently, we're just going to be doing it on the web. Nice, nice. And what does the future look like for pedal pods? You think? Hopefully bright. <laughs> Actually, I think it's going to be very, very bright for us. Um, with the level of interest that we've seen at the show, some of the press that's come around and talked to us, it's been it's been great. I think with some of the ideas that we've gotten at the show and some. Uh, some radical ideas on how to make the product look a little bit different should uh, should really help us out. 
Awesome. Well, you guys have been listening to Jerry from Pedal Pods here at the NAMM Show. This is Scott Robertson signing off. Thanks, Jerry. Thank you, sir. Very, very cool. Neat uh, concept. Be interesting to see that continue to develop and come to market. Um, I know that uh, they uh, have a lot of uh, very uh, – if you if you would have seen that booth, you would have seen kind of what they're doing with um, how they're designing the pedal boards to – you know, deliver different uh, in different power solutions, different configurations to uh, to various pedals. So, anyway, very very cool stuff, folks. Uh, it was a, you know it was a great show. Um, so, you know, I, d- I just want to spend a couple minutes and just talk about you know trade shows in general. You know, I uh, I'm big on messaging. I almost say uh, like almost everybody that comes to me says I need this. I need you know I need uh, you know a bro. I need a brochure. I need a public relations campaign. I need all those kind of things. But what you actually need before you do any of that stuff is a message. You need a story, right? And the companies that win at Nam and any trade show have a story, right? They're able to to tell their story in a way that attracts you. That, that brings you into it and kind of makes you, you know, the, the hero of the movie and they get to kind of be your, your guide. And I think that that's really important. Um, you know, you spend enough time walking around the trade show floor, you realize that, you know, some people have got a message and some people really, really don't, right? So if you're one of those people listening and you don't think that you quite have a message, I urge you to stop your marketing activities right now and go get into a room and work on the message. Just pull back, stop it. You know, I mean, good messaging sessions can change the name of an organization. It can change, uh, you know, you know, your focus, your purpose, exactly what you're trying to do. And and I can tell from from just you know walking around the trade show floor that not everybody kind of has kind of got the memo on this. Yet they sort of blindly do a bunch of stuff. And call that marketing, right? Here's what we're trying to change on this show, is that we understand that marketing is when a great message is developed and it's delivered in a powerful way, right? So what have we learned today? We learned that another it was another great show full of announcements, surprises, all kinds of crazy marketing. You know, this weekend is the Super Bowl, which has been called the Super Bowl of marketing, ironically enough. So make sure you watch on Sunday as brands try to make you feel stuff and make you laugh and, and do all kinds of stuff. You know, hopefully while there's a, a really good football game going on between my Los Angeles Rams, yes, and some other team from New England that is always in the Super Bowl. You know, so until next week, this is L.A. Rams super fan Scott Robertson signing off. Go Rams, go Rams, go Rams. We'll see you next week. Rock on. You know what's all around you every waking moment of your life? Marketing. You're choking on it. I'm Scott Robertson, and when it comes to strategic PR, branding, and marketing, I've seen it all. And actually, I'm still seeing it because bad marketing never sleeps. Join me each week on May the Best Brand Win right here on Intertalk Radio and learn how to make the marketing for your brand unforgettable. Hi, this is Tim Dolbear from Eclectica Studios. I'm a full-time mixing and recording engineer. I work with Grammy winners, labels, and indie artists using state-of-the-art digital mixing and restoration tools and the very best in analog gear. Really, though, it's my ability to bring tracks to life and fulfill your vision for your music. This has made me sought after by producers and artists worldwide. So spend your time working on music and not chasing a mix down a rabbit hole. Go to timdolbear.com and check out our free one-song mix offer. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. This is Jackie Bertoni from Jackie's Groove. Come join me weekly on my journey through the music business as I take you behind the velvet rope, interviewing industry notables such as Al Miola, 
Michael McDonald and Al Jarreau, to name but a few. Listen to their stories on being in the studios recording number one hits and onto the stages throughout the globe. Allow me to be your music historian. You can hear me live every Monday at 2 p.m. and every Wednesday at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time or 24-7 on Jackie's Groove.com. Ready to get your groove on?